home stretch is on the horizon. And the final full month of the regular season begins tonight as the number eight ranked Michigan State Spartans look to stay atop the Big Ten as they take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And so we welcome you inside the Compton family ice screen alongside the 14 year NHL man Steve Conroy, Tony Simeone. So happy to have you with us for what should be a really exciting weekend of college hockey here in South Bend. Steve, Michigan State's one of the best stories, not just in the Big Ten, but the entire country. Their scoring is off the charts this year, and they're being led by Joey Larson. Joey Larson leads this Michigan State Spartan team with 15 goals, and it's amazing because you mentioned they're a high-octane offense. He chips in in a lot of different ways. Uh, he's a shooter. First and foremost, he knows how to fire the puck, but he also has a nose for the net. He knows to go to those quiet areas where the puck might end up, and that's exactly what happens in a lot of situations. Adam Nightingale, uh, his head coach at Michigan State says he comes up with a lot of loose pucks, wins a lot of battles, whether it's along the boards, in front of the net. That enables him to score a lot of goals. Uh, he's on a great line, too, Gavin O'Connell and Red Savage. They're actually listed as a third line. They score a ton of goals. They'll be fun to watch all night long, all weekend long, as Michigan State tries to defend the top of the conference. For Notre Dame, we saw them two weekends ago score against Penn State in a way we haven't this year. Big reason why, Steve, is the power play produced three goals. Yeah, and we talked to Jeff Jackson, their head coach, about that, and he said, you know what, we're winning from faceoffs. And of course, when you start with a puck, normally good things happen. They're also doing a good job of retrieving pucks. Sometimes when you take shots, they're not always going to go in. You're going to have to get rebounds. They've been doing that. Patrick Moynihan there jumping on one. They've also been moving the puck very well. And Jeff Jackson went out of his way to talk about the flanks. Guys off to the side, feeding pucks, getting into good areas. And yeah, Danny Nelson, the freshman, he's having a fantastic year. Scores a lot of his goals on the power play. Power play has been red hot the last three games. There is plenty at stake this weekend in South Bend. The Irish are seeking a pair of top 10 wins, while Michigan State is hunting for a Big Ten regular season title. It's the Irish and the Spartans coming up next. Notre Dame and Michigan State about to play game one. We usually show you the goalies, but we have a first. This is during pregame warmups. Gavin O'Connell, the freshman for Michigan State, you saw the clock hit 23 by league rule. You have to be off the ice to start the game in warmups before the clock hits 23 minutes. Gavin O'Connell was five or six seconds late. By rule, that is a protocol violation. Michigan State is going to start the game on a penalty kill, rule 88.2. You can see it right there. That is a freshman and a rookie mistake, Steve. Notre Dame starts the game on the power play. I've never seen it. <coughs> Excuse me, never seen anything like that. Have seen a coach put in the wrong starting lineup, okay. and you can get penalized for that but never seen a situation like this, and that red-hot power play for the Fighting Irish gets their first look. Unbelievable to start the game on a power play for Notre Dame. As you mentioned in the broadcast, Open Irish are five for their last 18. Over their last five games, they've been producing at a high level. They get a chance to play a top-10 team in the country that has a really good kill, also be on the lookout. Seven shorthanded yeah. goals this year for Michigan State. That's what you really have to watch out for. And this is a quick strike defense and we're talking about Michigan State and we talked to their head coach Adam Nightingale about that he says you know what we keep guys fresh out there we've got eight or nine forwards who kill we have five or six defensemen who kill and there's Adam Nightingale who's done such a fantastic job here his second year behind the bench for the Spartans he can't believe it <laughs> and you know what kudos to the refs because it was the referee and we saw it in that one look we had uh, from the slash camera in the corner. The referee literally pointed up at the clock, yeah. and it was under 23 minutes. So, you know, good for them to, to pick that out. They follow and enforce the rule, and now Notre Dame is on the power play. So far, so good for Michigan State. Come in tops in the Big Ten. It's Cole Knubel, top line centerman for Notre Dame, has the puck and sends it out for Ryan Seedham. Across for Hunter Strand, drops it down low for Patrick Moynihan. Second on the team and goals with eight. As he sends it for Ryan Seedham. Puck broken up at center. This penalty killing unit. That time good work. Get the stick that time of Red Savage to break it up at the blue line. Shows the importance of having good passes. Kind of, of a lazy pass. It was Seedham to Cole Knubel. Put him in a tough situation. And you know, just like that, they turn the puck over. Now they spend the next 15 seconds trying to get the puck back inside the blue line. Danny Nelson, talented freshman for the Irish, takes it down low, throws it out for Drew Bavaro. Puck is chipped up high in the air with the captain, Nash Deanhouse. 
Ships it out to center ice. Michigan State started this game in a way they did not anticipate, but they've handled it well so far. Final seconds coming off this power play to open the game for Notre Dame. And the Spartans have successfully killed it. And out of the box comes Isaac Howard as the puck is chipped towards the middle. Janicki tipped it behind the net and it cleared out the other way. Tell you what, great first save by Trey Augustine. That came after the player had come out of the penalty box. It was a five on five, but a big shot from the point. And Trey Augustine making it look easy. I'm glad we have two games this weekend, Steve, to cover all the storylines with Michigan State because they're having a banner year in East Lansing. This is one of the big reasons why, though. The freshman goaltender, Trey Augustine, you saw him when you were covering World Juniors. He did a great job in net for Team USA. Won a gold medal for them, you know, just calm, cool, and collected. And that's what Adam Nightingale talked about him, just the poise he shows back there. He's only 18 years of age. It's, it's unbelievable what he's done. The resume he's put together so far in his young career. Youngest goaltender in all of college hockey. Just talking to Jimmy Baldwin, director of communications for Michigan State, gave us a great note that there's no other starting goaltender in the Big Ten that's less than two and a half years older than Trey Augustine. Ryan Bischel across the net tonight, across the ice rather, is five years older than Augustine. And he is just advanced beyond his years in his first season at Michigan State. Well, Coach Nightingale said it helps settle his team down a lot. He said, listen, we've got four freshman defensemen back there. We're going to make some mistakes. He bails us out, and he really just gets guys all on the same page. Late offside call there against Michigan State. I mentioned it's a Spartan team that has 10 freshmen on the roster. Adam Nightingale's also gone out and acquired a few transfers to join this team. It's a big reason why they're eighth in the country. There right there is Kevin O'Connell, who we saw for the all the wrong reasons at the start of the broadcast. Well, a couple things. Watch for him to have a real good game because he knows <laughs> he put his team at a huge disadvantage. The other thing, though, is that was a great penalty kill, and that sometimes can get you into a game. That can get the bench going. You're in enemy territory, huge kill. You know, that's a confidence, that's a momentum builder. See how both teams react after the opening power play is killed off. Notre Dame officially credited with one shot on the game as Joey Larson leading score for the Spartans. Already has 15 goals this year with one more he can tie Patrick Kotarenko who had 16 for Michigan State in 2019-2020. They haven't had a 20-goal score in East Lansing since 2010. It's amazing, really, when you think about the tradition. The, it's a, it's a hockey-hungry town, East Lansing. And uh, Michigan State, a, a proud program in college hockey. Um, it's surprising that it's been that long since they've had a 20-goal score. It's Corey Tropp back in 2010. It's a Michigan State team that won the national championship in 2007. As Tanner Kelly's on his way in, centers of feed was looking that time for Tommy Manisto. Couldn't connect with him, and the puck comes out the other way for Notre Dame. This is their fourth line on the ice as Augustine couldn't handle the first save. It was loose at the side of the net and cleared out. Fourth line has got some speed. Carter Slaggard out there with Fleming and Jaden Davis, and each of those guys can scoot. Uh, they can push the D back, and they had a look there. Kind of a, an awkward rebound from Augustine. Now a giveaway in the Spartan zone that time. Patrick Geary gave it away. Carter Slacker, who you just mentioned, was right there. One note for Irish fans, Grant Silinoff, not in the lineup tonight for Notre Dame. Normally second or third line forward for the Irish. He's out day-to-day -day with a lower body injury. As this shot doesn't get through, hops up near Bischel, and is swept to the corner. Another shot from Geary, gets in on net. Bischel had to kick it away after a deflection. Turnover behind the net by the Irish, and that's why they're stuck in their own zone. Nico Mueller, veteran for this Michigan State team, just had 21 total points in his first three seasons, then it broke out in a big way last year. 34, playing his fifth season, has been a real key veteran for an otherwise very youthful hockey team. The fourth youngest hockey team in the country is Michigan State. Trevor Janicki, fifth-year senior for Notre Dame, shoots a puck at the flex into the corner. Matt Pascal can't get the puck out. Brennan Ali for Notre Dame takes it away. Goes to work in the corner. Ali sends it out. Around it comes for Ryan Seedham. 
Pratt transfer from Harvard. He's had a really sharp year with the Irish. 16 points so far this year in 26 games. Puck rolls up along the wall as Pluszynski sends it back for Seedham. Irish handling in the offensive end for a while as that shot from Nelson didn't miss, miss by much, and it goes up out of play. Good job by Zach Pluszynski keeping the puck in. There's Ryan Bischel. You know, I think very similar to Trey Augustine in a lot of respects. Obviously, the older of the two netminders, second in NCAA uh, hockey in total saves. But he's calm, cool, and collected. You know, doesn't give up bad rebounds, and he really helps to settle down his team. And, you know, that is so important. You don't want to get down early in a hockey game, give the other team some momentum. Both of these goalies have made some real good saves to start this game. There's Neenhouse. Good work by Henry Nelson. Freshman runs him off the puck in the corner. Comes out for a name you're going to hear a lot of this weekend as Bischel smothers it. This is Arnim Levshnov, who many expect Steve to go on the top five of the NHL draft next year. We saw Macklin Celebrini at BU. Yeah. Another chance to watch maybe a future NHL star this weekend in South Bend. He's just a youngster, just 18 years of age. I like the way on that shot he kind of stepped around the puck. You know, he's a right shot playing the left side. And, and right defense, right shot defenseman in the NHL at a premium. Right? It's just it's just a fact. There's a lot more left-handed defensemen than there are talented right-handed defensemen. So yeah, he'll go top five for sure. It's from Belarus, again eligible in the most upcoming draft. He leads the entire country in plus minus. He's a plus 24 on the year. So when number five in green is out there, Michigan State is having a lot of success this season. Spartans couldn't get it out. Justin Janicki intercepts, takes it below the goal line, and tried to send it back for Drew Bavaro, and the puck hops over his stick and rolls all the way back into their own end. Yeah, that was a good stick by Gavin O'Connell. That pass was headed back to the point. You just got a stick on it, tipped it down. There's a thing we should mention about Lefshinov. Yes, he's a, a right shot defenseman. He's also 6'2", 210 pounds. And they rave about his size and his physicality. This puck is intercepted by Janicki. Irish can clear out of harm's way. Carpenter. Tried to take him into the offensive end. Tyler Carpenter, because Solonoff is out, has moved up to the third line for the Irish. He's working on an 11-game goalless drought as the Irish send it into the Spartan zone. I'm looking forward to that line. They've got a little bit of everything on that line. They've got some grit in Carpenter. They've got some, you know, speed in Janicki and Hunter Strand. I think played some of his best hockey over the last couple of weeks. I guess that's three weeks now because last week was a bye week. <laughs> Irish. We're glad when the bye came. They got a big sweep over Penn State, but talking with head coach Jeff Jackson, some kind of cold or flu going around mm. Notre Dame's campus has really affected their ability to prepare during that extra downtime. That was a concern coming in. Everybody in the lineup, though, that we'd expect, with the exception of Silinoff, who's out with a lower body injury. Yeah, we don't know whether they're 100% or not, but uh, certainly everyone in the lineup, and Jeff Jackson talked about that. He said, listen, the bye week was great. It was kind of a mini training camp for us. You know, we did a lot of conditioning stuff, a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. But then, come Tuesday, they had six guys out of the lineup, and you see the numbers for Jeff Jackson. Unbelievable career wins with 587, closing in on 600. But when you're without six guys in any kind of practice, it's tough to get anything done. So um, I'm sure not everyone 100%. This was Wednesday we talked to him. So I'm sure you know, some guys, and listen, I've been through it. I, I played in the NHL with the flu. Sometimes you play your best hockey yeah. when you're a little under the weather. You keep things simpler, you go short, you go hard. And sometimes a simpler game is a better game. Should also mention Jeff Jackson, Michigan State alum, coaching against his yeah. former team. Asked him if he's been proud to see the way the program's turned it around here this season. And he just said he competes against them and is more of a Tom Izzo fan. Follows the basketball team, <laughs> keeps tabs on them, and has remained competitive against the Spartans in his coaching days. As the puck hops over Trevor Janicki's stick. That's Brendan Ali. He creates havoc on the forecheck, and he was just in there. Separated man from puck. Just a backhand pass out front to Trevor Janicki, and unfortunately didn't make good contact with it. Wow, what a pass by Levshnov, who's looking up the ice <laughs> through the opposite direction, and it's chipped in deep. Averaging a point per game in Big Ten play. One of the best defensemen in the entire country, just as a freshman, is the top line for the Spartans is on the ice. This is the all-sophomore line. You've got 
Isaac Howard, Carson Dorwart, and Daniel Russell. They can really make some magic happen in the offensive end for the Spartans. Well, they've got some chemistry there, too. We talked about Dorwart and Russell not only playing together last year, but they also played together in the USHL. And added Howard, who played at Minnesota Duluth as a freshman, comes over this year, played in World Juniors, won a gold with Team USA. He led them in goal scoring. He had seven goals. Watch this. Here's Knubel on his way in. Cole Knubel shoots. Big save by Augustine. No, that was a lot tougher save than he made it look. Came out of his glove, but that's a real good shot from Paul Knubel. Big hit by Drew Bavaro, dislodges the puck. Irish can try to go three on two. Good work that time by Maxim Sturback, though, to break it up and retrieve the puck. Sturback name might be familiar to NHL fans. His dad, Martin Sturback, played in the NHL for LA and Pittsburgh. Trey Augustine, I talked about that very first save early, right at the end of the power play. This might be his second best. Now, Cole Knubel looking for an option, decides to shoot it himself, and look at how focused Augustine is. Just, And I like the fact that he plays deep in his crease. A goalie with confidence will sometimes play back a little bit, and it allows them to get left to right just a little quicker. So far, Augustine and Bischel have kept the sheet clean tonight. Augustine already has six saves past the midway point of the opening period as the puck is given away to Danny Nelson. Irish centerman sends it down for Carter Slagger. He spins, fires towards the slot, was looking for a lurking Trevor Janicki, but he couldn't connect. Nelson's got it again. He, too, was on that Team USA gold medal winning team. As Larson takes it away, and a penalty's coming up. Arm is up as Larson has the puck touched by Seedham. Looks like the Spartans will get a chance to go on their first power play when we come back. Irish have had a chance, and now Michigan State will get their crack at the man advantage. Welcome back to South Bend. We're scoreless in the first period. Watch the middle of the screen. That's Danny Nelson. His stick just gets under the skate of the Michigan State player. That is Red Savage. And it's accidental, but it doesn't matter. It's still a trip. And there's Danny Nelson in the Sunday. So the first power play for one of the best power play units in the country. Michigan State at 27% has managed to score 20 power play goals this year. It's worth mentioning, they're averaging over four goals per game as a team. Top five in the country as Dorwart fires one that goes over and around. Bazgal sends it across for Dorwart. They look down low, it's out of the reach. Collected, though, once again by Russell. His feed broken up twice by Knubel. Held in at the line. Spartans keep the pressure on. Dorwart again holds. His shot deflects up high, and once more, Russell is after the puck. Michigan State supports the puck really well. Everyone's got an option, even though there's pressure here from Notre Dame on the kill. Gavin O'Connell, freshman, down for Dorwart. Wide angle shot, didn't miss by much, and it ricochets all the way back into the Spartan zone. Tony, I loved your question to Coach Nightingale about the power play, especially, uh, well, the success of the power play. And he said, you know, to have a successful power play, you got to have good players. And I, I've got some good players out there, and they know how to move the puck around. Red Savage, you saw him draw the penalty. New power play units out there as Mueller sends it for the middle, and it's intercepted by Justin Janicki. A chance to go shorthanded. Hunter Strand is denied by Augustine. Or that second attempt, I believe, was stopped by Augustine. Not only a great first save, I think the second one was better, but a great shorthanded chance for the Irish. Michigan State's first in the country with seven shorthanded goals. Irish have a pair this year. They almost had their third. Puck is chipped out. Once again, Notre Dame does their job and clocks down to just 10 seconds remaining on the first Spartan power play of the night. Wow, what a feed. Up to Savage on his backhand. Bischel makes the save. You can't let that happen. You know, two defensemen back there, and they do that, make that stretch pass. Partial breakaway and a big stop by Bischel. 
So both teams have successfully killed the power play. Neenhouse fires a beautiful feed to a lurking Tiernan Shouty on the back door, and Bischel's able to make the stop. Well, you've seen this goaltender duel live up to what we talked about. Here's the shorthanded opportunity. Great job by Justin Janicki to get his head up, to feather that pass. And I like Hunter Strand staying with that. He gets his own rebound. Watch the original stop, and then watch the second attempt. Right there. Oh. And that's a left pass saved by Trey Augustine. Fantastic. Ryan Bischel, anything you can do, I can do better. The shorthanded opportunity. Make that the power play opportunity. Stop one on one, the partial breakaway. And Ryan Bischel. Just make it look easy. Another great feed, too, from Levschnoff there. Seen him a couple times, Steve. Oh. He's made some great passes already. Yeah, and, and it's not a 15, 20-foot pass. That's a 55-foot pass to spring a guy on a breakaway. He's got 19 assists on the year as a freshman defenseman. Just turned 18. He was playing games as a 17-year-old this year in the month of October before his birthday came at the end of the month. That does not happen very often. And he's playing against 23 and 24 year old men uh, and really holding his own. Well, he's paired up with Nash Neenhaus, who turned 24 earlier this year, back in December. So there's nearly six years separating the defense mates. It's a great combo. Youthful exuberance and veteran wisdom. <laughs> yeah, and well, we should mention Nash Neenhouse, his dad played. I played against his dad for a few years. Craig Neenhouse. Russell carries in. Oh, that shot got on Bischel in a hurry. He's able to shrug it off as the top line goes to work for the Spartans once again. Ali. Good feed ahead for Janicki. Tried to send another one for Nelson. Couldn't connect with him, but he's able to hold it in at the line and drive it back down for Ali. Good work by Geary, the freshman. Again, one of a handful of freshmen that played a fence for this eighth-ranked Spartan unit. And an outstanding year as Neenhouse carries it in, shoots, and Bischel is able to see it and make the save. Something this Michigan State do will, tee, do, will do is get their D involved. They'll activate. That time it was Neenhouse jumping in. The button hook there from Dorwart, the pass, and Neenhouse was looking all the way. Tried to pick that blocker side. Might have hit his own man in front of the net. And Ryan Bischel, let's see if this gets through. Yeah, it does, actually. Might have got deflected, but Ryan Bischel, as always, quick to cover. Michigan State, so far, seven shots in the game. That's well below their average. They average about 12 shots per period, 36 and a half per game. They have the third most goals in the country, 107 coming in. Only Denver and Michigan have more goals this year. I think Jeff Jackson and the coaching crew for the Irish have to be happy with this start. They've done a pretty good job defensively. Aside from a couple stretch passes and that partial breakaway, uh, they've done a pretty good job against a, a high-octane offense. Yeah, it's worth mentioning, this is the second meeting of these teams this year, second weekend they've played. Michigan State swept the Irish earlier this year in East Lansing. It was a 5-2 win and a 2-1 win, so seven total goals in that weekend series. Spartan team that's 17 and 6 on the year as this shot saved off the stick of Reed Lebster. The grad transfer from UMass gets one on Bischel that he has to kick aside. Lebster then has it taken away. Janicki will feed it for Knubel, and the Irish can get it out of their own end. Janicki quickly after the puck behind the Spartan net. Centered a pass that's intercepted by Savage. Sends it off the stick of O'Connell. First one back there is Paul Fisher, the freshman defenseman for Notre Dame. Like the fake there from Fisher. You know, he faked, he was going hard around. Everyone cheated to that side, he went back the other way. Savage's pass out of the reach of Larson. So he retrieves it, goes to work on the puck again in the corner as the clock is under. Four minutes to go here in the opening period. Irish playing their first game in 13 days after the bye week. Seven teams in the Big Ten, so someone is always off. Irish actually have another bye week in the final week of the regular season. The way the schedule shook out this year, they played a lot of games early. Now kind of a 
staccato schedule as they're three on two. Fourth line going to work. Davis centered one looking for Maddox Fleming. It's into his skates and retrieved by Pascal, and they can clear the puck into the neutral zone. Davis again fed one towards net. Chipped out for Kelly, who sends it ahead. And after it again is Manisto. Tommy Manisto, freshman forward for the Spartans. He played in World Juniors as well, represented Finland. As Neenhaus sends it off the wall, top defensive pairing is going to work right now. As Tiernan Shouty drops it for Levschnad, who came all the way down to shoot wide of the net. Russell after the puck in the corner. Levshnov comes down. Puck squirts free. Out to center ice. Here comes Ali. One on three as the Irish were changing behind him. Now Michigan State has it going the other way. This is Russell spinning in the corner. Out it comes for a long range shot this time by David Gucciardi that doesn't get through. And it's back out through center. And Levshnov is there to track it down. Yeah, the only reason it got out over the blue line. Strong stick by Ali on Gucciardi. Just kind of handcuffed him, and basically the puck came out over the blue line. Good work by Dorwart. Broke it up in the corner and took it back. Howard can retrieve it. Sturback is after it. Feeds it for the middle. Shot in on Bischel. Makes the first save. Never let it get free, and that's why his teammates run to his defense. I like that reaction. You know, Ryan Bischel had this. Looked like in his glove. At least it was in his equipment somewhere, and Dorward took a couple extra pokes at it. The D didn't like that. A couple of the forwards didn't like it either. Watch the play. The shot gets yeah, up into the equipment. It's not loose. That's Danny Nelson coming all the way back. And yeah, Danny Nelson's a centerman, but he played a lot of youth hockey as a defenseman. And there's a guy who played right wing with these Michigan State Spartans. Yeah. 2003 to 2005. Hard to believe that's. Now 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. He's starting to feel old. Well, he started out with Lake. He was a Lake State, well, Lake Stater. Yeah. Lake Superior State. And uh, played there for two years, then transferred to Michigan State. Jeremy Davidson, good feed for Lepster, whose shot goes wide. Davidson, last couple trips, has managed to create some offense. He's a senior. Second on the team in goals a couple years back. Had a big goal in game three last year. Michigan State came into this building and won the opening round quarterfinal matchup in the Big Ten tournament against the Irish. Notre Dame went, won game one. Michigan State won the next two. And Davidson had one of the big goals in the decisive third game. There's not a lot of players that return on this team. There's a few left over. It's a lot of new faces in East Lansing. But that had to give Adam Nightingale and the entire program a jolt getting that first conference win. And it's really bled over into this season. I asked him if he was surprised about the success they've had this year. And, and the answer was basically not really. You know, coaches expect a lot from their team, from their players. But he saw it coming. And, and a glimpse of that last year, obviously, you know, towards the end of the season. And then, you know, what they've done this year. And the sellouts of an ice arena, too. Oh. Have been, Phenomenal. Savage feeds it for Larson with 15 seconds left. And it comes back to Neenhouse. And they've sold out all but one game this year at Munn Ice Arena. They've really injected a great amount of life back into the Spartan hockey program. They've won three national championships. Amazing, though, how difficult it's been as of late. That win in the series last year, Steve, those are the first wins in the Big Ten tournament they ever recorded. Conference has been around for close to a decade now. Mm -hmm. They already had this year more wins than in nine of their previous 11 seasons. And there's still a month of the season yeah. to go. Yeah, exactly. Well, long history between these two teams. First game ever played, January 18th, 1922. <laughs> A little over 100 years ago. Tony. Over 100 years ago. And no, I did not call that game. <laughs> I imagine it might have been a similar score after one period. Yeah, Scoreless probably. here in South Bend after one. And each team put nine shots on the net. During the intermission, have a chance to hear from the Irish captain, Landon Slaggard, about how he 
leads with that C on his chest and will break down the first 20 minutes of play between Notre Dame and Michigan State. They each got nine shots. They each had a power play that was killed. And after 20 minutes, it's a tie game in South Bend. Scoreless in South Bend between Notre Dame and Michigan State after one period of play. Irish and Spartans beating up for the third out of four regular season times this year. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. Happy that you're with us for this weekend series. Steve, no score after 20, so we're going to feature the goaltenders. But I thought a good intensity to the start of the game. I think both coaches have to be happy. Their teams killed off the only penalties that they took in the first period as well. Yeah, they each limited the other team to nine shots, which isn't bad. Coaches typically want less than 10 shots in a period and yeah we, we kind of highlighted the goaltenders throughout that 20 minutes they deserved all the credit we gave them because they were fantastic let's look each of them had nine saves in period number one we'll start with the freshman Trey Augustine as advertised in the first period yeah this game started with a power play for the fighting Irish this was five on five right after the power play had ended but that was a great save from Augustine and then again that glove and, and I like the way he tracks pucks it's not just the first save it's a second save but then it was the fighting Irish kill, killing a penalty shot Shorthanded. Here's Hunter Strand. Great feed from Justin Janicki. Not one stop, but two stops by Trey Augustine. Blocker, and then it's the left pad right there. Kicks it out. Big stop for the Spartan goaltender. And Ryan Bischel not to be outdone. Yeah, he was outstanding in the first period. I mean, he's, again, kind of doing what we've seen him do all season. And that was through traffic. Niehaus with a shot uh, from range. Again, a little bit of traffic in front. And then the 55-foot uh, pass to Davidson, who was in all alone, tried to put it between the legs, and Ryan Fischel said no. He kept it scoreless. So you got the reigning minutes. Big Ten goaltender of the year on one side, and Bishley you got Trey Augustine, who just won gold uh, with Team USA at World Juniors. Both have plenty of accolades. You look at it here, Steve, I'll mention this. Michigan State, one of the best scoring teams in the country, averaging more than four goals per season, so uh, per game this season. I would say then Notre Dame has to be slightly more happy with the first 20 minutes. I think they've got to be real happy. Uh, you know, and we saw a couple of those shots. Yeah, they were from high danger areas, but for the most part, they were from range, and that's exactly what Jeff Jackson wants. He trusts his goalie enough to know that if he sees it, he's going to stop it, and that's what he did. We'll see what adjustments both teams make after the first intermission. Second period coming up in South Bend. That guy's going to be locked in for period number two. <laughs> Almost set for the second period here in South Bend. First, let's go back, though. About two months, early December, Michigan State. This is on their way to one of their best seasons in recent memory so far, Steve. They pick up a sweep over the Irish in game one, a 5-2 victory. Then they scratch one out on the second night in game two. In fact, this year, they're 6-0-1 in Saturday game twos. Last week was their only defeat in a game two against Minnesota. They've been really sharp really throughout the year. They only have six losses. That was a big sweep against the Irish earlier this year, a big reason why they're the eighth-ranked team in the country, and they very well could win the Big Ten regular season title. Yeah, and that second game, obviously, real close 2-1, but uh, they went it with goaltending, and Trey Augustine, you know, one of the best in NCAA hockey. You look at what's happened recently, though, and not to take anything away from Michigan State, but they are 2-2 two and two over the last four games. Now, against Minnesota, a tough team, and against Michigan. And the Fighting Irish, well, they've won three in a row. And yes, it was against Penn State and that third game against Ohio State, but they're getting some confidence. And prior to that, I don't know if you can remember, they played Wisconsin, they lost 7-4. Yeah. It was not a 7-4 hockey game. They, I think it was 5-4 at one point. Wisconsin gets a couple of empty net goals, so Jeff Jackson really happy with the way his team is trending. Yeah, game one was a one-goal loss against Wisconsin, who's right. the other team that's really been top-notch, currently fifth in the pair-wise is Wisconsin. It's been them and Michigan State that have stolen the headlines so far this year. And you mentioned Michigan State just 2-2 two and two in their last four. Again, it's been an outstanding season. They were trailing in the win against Minnesota with five minutes left. They scored to tie it with about a little bit less than five and then won it with four seconds left on the clock. So they very well, you know, could have lost that game. Now, that win is a testament to how they've played all year to the final second, managed to get a win out of it and earn the split last weekend. But this will be a really interesting month, Steve, I think, to monitor how Michigan State now somewhat plays with the lead in the conference. Yeah, and you know, all of a sudden, they're not surprising teams anymore. You know, you, you know you're up against one of the best teams in NCAA hockey. So uh, everyone bringing their best against this Spartan team. See who gets the first goal. It's, of course, an important one. 
Michigan State on the year was 13-0-1 when they lead after the first period. So the Irish have at least managed to navigate that <laughs> interesting stat that would not have looked good if they were trailing after one. Let's see how they handle period number two. Michigan State averages over four goals per game as Levshnoff sends it across for his defense mate Neenhaus. Then try to drop it back for him and send it into the neutral zone so the Spartans have to tag up. Michigan State came into the weekend tied for third in the country in goals scored. Third in the country in total goals. So it pops along the wall and it comes out to center ice where Tyler Carpenter flips it into the corner. Justin Janicki, first one there. Ooh, tried to feed it back for a streaking Carpenter just out of his reach. And Sturback is after it in the corner. Sent back through and it comes all the way into the Irish end. I like the thought process there from the third line, though. They get it deep. Tyler De Carpenter gets it deep. Justin Janicki jumps on it and actually tried to hit Carpenter coming in late. But uh, that's what you have to do against this Michigan State team. Get pucks in behind their defense and retrieve them. Puck didn't get out. Official had to come play it. Now Gucciardi can shoot. Loose at the top of the crease. And Davidson just couldn't get to it and put a clean rebound on net. That was a hot rebound. I think that maybe came off the blocker of Ryan Bischel. And uh, we get a chance to look at it again. He did a real good job getting from his right to his left to track that puck. Let's take a look at that shot. Through a little bit of traffic. Oh, yeah, but you see how he came out? Not only did he track the puck, but he was attacking the puck. And when you come out at the puck, obviously the guy with the puck sees a lot less of the net. So good angle read there from Bischel. Worth mentioning, Ryan Bischel, along with Landon Slager, recently named a Hobie Baker nominee. Levshnoff for Michigan State, their lone representative. Let's see when they announce that final three towards the end of the year. Bischel again towards the top in the country right now fourth and save percentage coming into the weekend at 928 last year when he was Big Ten goaltender of the year was 931. It's probably between him and McClellan right now who is the Wisconsin netminder. He might have the edge. He's got a 930 save percentage and of course Wisconsin's right now in second in the conference. It's still a month to go in the year. Manisto's shot didn't get through. It's deflected out towards center and here's Carter Slagger with some time and space through the neutral zone. Oh, onto the stick of Davis, and he got a clean shot on Augustine, and he makes the save. Kind of a broken play there. It looked like, I don't know, it was Carter Slaggard or Fleming gets his puck on his, gets his stick on a puck. It ended up right on Davis's stick. One timed it, and Augustine waiting for it to make the stop. I think Davis might have been surprised how open he was in such a dangerous area. You know, I thought maybe he could have walked in a little bit, but I understand the thought process. The quicker you shoot it, the less the goalie can kind of readjust. Thought he could surprise him, but uh-uh, Augustine was there. Daniel Russell riding a three-game point streak coming into the weekend. Top line going to work. All sophomores for the Spartans. Neenhaus across for Levshnoff. Holds. Looking that time for Howard. Couldn't connect cleanly. Oh, oh Levshnoff wow. tried to play it around Knubel, but then lost his footing, and now the Irish are on the move. It's Moynihan with Slagger and Knubel. Moynihan shoots, rebound in front, and Augustine makes the save. Now the Spartans can counter. It's Howard dropping it off, and the shot doesn't get through. Cole Knubel with two unbelievable great defensive plays in his own zone. That last one just stripping the puck, and earlier he got beat by Levshinov, but he stuck with it, and he got back, created the turnover, turned into a three-on-one. What a 30-second <laughs> flurry on both sides of the ice. No goals to show for it, but entertaining nonetheless. Now, Levshinov literally turned the defender inside out, but he sticks with it. Watch Cole Knubel there lift the stick. Levshinov lost his balance. It turns into a three-on-one. Watch the chance that Cole Knubel gets. Off the rebound. What a stop there by Augustine. And then it hits the other direction. And watch again, Knubel, even though he might look tired, right there. That pass just a little bit behind this Michigan State player, but Cole Knubel, got to give him credit. You know, up and down the ice two or three times. He didn't quit and was a big part of that back check. You're right. Had to make the stop on one end, shoot on the other, as now Danny Nelson puts on the speed, looking for Janicki and 
Augustine once more is able to stop a loose puck in front. Stopped his own man, actually. It was Red Savage who had to deflect that puck. I understand what he was trying to do, but he put it right on his own goalie. The netminder was there. Watch this play by Nelson. I like the speed. He was trying to get it to Trevor Janicki. Savage gets his stick in at the last second. Watch 21, but he deflects it right on his own goalie. Savage unintentional, but Augustine makes himself big and makes a big stop. Michigan State right now doing something we haven't seen many teams do against Notre Dame this year, and that is dominate the faceoff circle. They have a 12 6 edge. Irish are the fifth best faceoff team in the country at 54.7%. It's Bischel. I oh, didn't see that one. Ricochet just wide. Yeah, that faceoff stat, Tony, surprising because Michigan State came in here just right around 50%. Yeah. So they're certainly not world beaters in the faceoff dots. Paul Fisher has some real estate, sends it in front, tip towards net, and Augustine again makes the save. Now Drew Bavaro winds it up, and once more, Augustine makes the save, and he's putting on a clinic. Well, Tony, you talked about faceoffs, and yeah, it's a big part of the game. You win faceoffs, you control the play, and here Michigan State. Now, that's not a clean win, but the winger helped out. That's certainly a clean win in the neutral ice area. And you know, sometimes it goes off a ref, but it's it's the wingers and defensemen helping out the centermen, winning those draws, and that is so big. And there you see, that's certainly a clean one right back to the point. I'm sure Adam Nightingale and his coaching staff said, look guys, it's an area of our game that we've got to be better. Face-offs, you know, determine possession, determine who has the puck, and puck possession is such a big part of college hockey. Really, any hockey. Now it's 13 to 6. They've given them credit for the last one. You mentioned it. It's not always the centerman. There you see the numbers coming in. It's a group effort out there. Irish have a couple guys. They got Canubo on the roster, who came in over 50%. Danny Nelson's close to 60, right around 58 mm -hmm. coming in. So far tonight, Nelson's only taken one faceoff. Still no score between Notre Dame and Michigan State. Game one of this two-game weekend series in South Bend. Irish right now 20th in the pairwise. Season ended today. They're on the outside looking in unless they win the Big Ten postseason tournament. Michigan State would be comfortably in if the season ended today. Still a ton of time. And the Irish, what they're going to actually really like when they look at their schedule, it's tough. But they're playing the number seven pairwise team in Michigan State, then number five or four, Wisconsin. Then you see Minnesota up there as well. They're on the schedule before they finish the year against Michigan. So they have the four teams in front of them in the pairwise, which means if you win, you're going to go up. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And th that's what helps in the pairwise, your strength of schedule and who you're beating. And it is a gauntlet. These next four weeks are going to be well, crucial in exactly where the Fighting Irish end up pairwise. Yeah, the downside is you're playing good teams. You might not win, but we were pointing it out, too, when we were getting ready for the game, Steve, that Notre Dame, of all the teams in the top 20 in the pairwise, they're the only team with double-digit losses at 11, which tells you how strong their schedule has been right. throughout the year. They had to play BC. They played BU twice, along with, of course, all the good teams in the Big Ten. That's why they're in the position they're at with a month to go in the season. Now, the unofficial score clock here has five shots by Notre Dame in this period, none by Michigan State. And, you know, we're almost almost eight minutes in. We'll call it six and a half, seven and a half minutes in. So the I, I think the coaching staff's got to be real happy. Yeah. We've talked about it a number of times. This is a high-octane offense, the Spartans, and they have done a real good job taking away important parts of the ice. They average the third most shots in the country per game. Mm. 36.7 per game, only behind Penn State and Western Michigan. To your point right now, Steve, they're on pace for certainly sub 30. Yeah. I mean, maybe 25 at this pace right now. Jeff Jackson will be the first to tell you. You know, sometimes he doesn't mind giving up shots if they're from range or outside the dots, but it's, you know, that prime real estate in front of Ryan Bischel. And they have not had a lot of looks there. Yeah, Augustine's made the highlight staves, but to your point, that maybe illustrates that Notre Dame's had the more mm -hmm. high-quality, high-volume chances as they approach the halfway point of this contest. 
Well, it's a real chess match at this point. You know, we're almost, what, halfway through the hockey game and 0-0. And zero, zero. You know, who flinches first? Yeah. And who makes that mistake? And listen, hockey's a game of mistakes, but you just try to limit that. You try to play clean hockey. You know, plays might not always be there, so just get the puck deep and oh, here's a penalty to Notre Dame. Here's Gucciardi, he can shoot, tips towards net, big stop Bischel, rebound for Larson was there, but he never got a clean one on net. It's Danny Nelson again, unfortunately, he's gonna get the holding call. Danny Nelson took a penalty back in period number one. Notre Dame number 11, two minutes for holding. And holding is the call. A little bit of puck possession by Michigan State, and Although Notre Dame was in really good position defensively, Danny Nelson got his hand off the stick, put a grab on the arm. Watch 11, right there, reaching with one hand, and then you see that left hand just grab the hip of the state player. Quick shot off the face off, and they score! Isaac Howard lights the lamp, and the Spartans are on the board first. Well, we talk about the importance of face-offs, especially on the power play. Dorwart wins it cleanly. And Isaac Howard, the star for Team USA at the World Junior Championships, watch Dorwart, you know, with the help, help from the ref. I believe this, after he pulls it back on his backhand, goes off the linesman skate, and that thing knuckled the whole way. Boy, that was a real good look. Watch this puck almost end over end and it'll catch the crossbar. Might have even gone off one of the players coming out at Howard. Regardless, his seventh of the year. Seventh of the season, it comes on the power play. This is a guy that was at Minnesota Duluth last year as a freshman, joins Michigan State to link up with Dorwart and Russell, the all sophomore line, and he's provided the opening goal for Michigan State. Justin Janicki holds the puck. Oh, fanned on his feet. Had a lurking Kluzinski with the puck. Ends up in the back of the net. And in the blink of an eye, the Irish have tied the game. Ryan Seedham evens the ledger. Really like the patience of Justin Janicki here. Even though he mishandles the puck, doesn't make the pass he wants. A broken play. Michigan State tried to clear it. It goes off Jeremy Davidson right to Ryan Seedham. Good job by Tyler Carpenter, too, to get to the front of the net and just stand there, basically attract a couple of Spartan players. And Seedham just pokes at it through the legs of Augustine. And what a response from the Fighting Irish. The goals come 27 seconds apart as Bischel is able to glove it and stop play. You called it, Steve, broken play. I mean, somehow the puck ends up in the back of the net. You can see Augustine had, had no idea where the puck was coming from. No, and I'll go back to Justin Janicki. I, I thought he did just a great job. Head up the whole way, slowed it down, button hooked back, realized he didn't really have a lot of support, and then he walked the blue line. Made a bad pass, but then it gets kind of fumbled by Michigan State, and it ends up on Ryan Seedham's stick, and he gets the goal. What would you say earlier? Hockey's a game of mistakes? Exactly. And sometimes the mistakes work in your favor. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable. Seedham, who joined Notre Dame after a career with Harvard, played three years with them in 99 games. It's his third goal of the year. He's also leading the team in block shots. He's been a great addition to this Notre Dame roster, which has a really deep freshman classes. Jaden Davis has a chance on a rebound. Another chance for Fleming, and Augustine comes across. Well, the crowd has really gotten into it here at the Compton Family Ice Arena. Really good, strong fourth line shift here for Notre Dame. Yeah, Fleming with Davis and Carter Slagger. A couple times tonight, Steve, that fourth line's packed a punch for Notre Dame. They certainly have. They've got some speed. You know, they're getting pucks in, they're getting pucks back. Ooh. Now Savage gets a shot on Bischel, and he's able to make the save. The goals have livened up the building a bit. Well, they certainly have. And here's Jaden Davis. He realized he was at an angle, but he's going to one time, and then that second stop off of Fleming. You know, there's the first one, making him save himself big. And look at him get back. Wow. I mean, that is just unbelievable. 
That stop. Okay, now look where he is. He overslides. Watch him get back. And look, he makes the pad save. Fleming, I'm sure, would have liked to have gone maybe a little farther left just inside that left post. But regardless, big stop by Augustine. And there's some pushing and shoving between Michael Master Domenico and the leading Spartan scorer, Joey Larson, behind the play. And now an arm is up. It might be for just that. I think against Master Domenico, as he was battling with Larson, they're going to get him for a hold. Yeah, good pickup, Tony. And that's happened a couple of times down to the Irish in their own zone. Let's listen. Notre Dame penalty at number four. Two minutes. Holding. Holding the call. And yeah, when you get defending, sometimes, and Master Domenico had lost his stick. And maybe part of the reason he put the hold on the Spartan player. So they scored on their last power play. Let's see what Michigan State can do here. Again, they operate at 27% coming in. Tons of skill out there for Michigan State as they look to go ahead once more. There was no score through about 28 minutes. As the puck comes loose to the side of Bischel, makes the Stop to kick it aside and they can reload. Across it comes. Again, oh. Howard shoots. Ooh, Cena blocked it. Looks okay. Puck's not cleared. That's dumb. Dorwart looking for Howard for his second and he slid it too far wide. He's got to shoot that right away. Puck might have been a little too far behind him. He's got it again. Cena working on him. Picks his pocket and Janicki can skate it free and clear it down the ice. Good penalty killing from Seedham. Tony, you mentioned he leads the team in block shots. He took one for the team there early in that kill. And then good anticipation there to jump the pass. You jump the pass, you break up the play, and you get it down the ice. Fifth best power play in the country is on the ice right now as Larson sends it down for Savage. He takes a spill. Fisher can't clear. Sends it to the wall, and Slagger does. Well, the Irish captain goes to the ice and sweeps it the other way. Well, what's impressive there is he swept it with one hand on his stick, and he got some height on that puck. Jumped over the stick of the defender. Oh, Spartans enter with speed. Larson whiffed on the one-timer. Comes out for Knubel, and now he's on the move. He's got Slagger, and Levstam knocks it out of midair. I wonder if he played any baseball in Belarus because he picked that one off about two feet off the ice. Slagger goes down behind the play. Fans want to call. They won't get it as Levshnoff gets a shot with the final seconds rolling off the power play. Bavaro is struggling right now. It's still five on four as the puck is deflected and rings off the post. Larson again. Bischel makes the kick save. Spartan still. Have the puck possessed in the offensive end. Nico Mueller down low it goes. Spartans trying to change with the puck in the Irish end. Notre Dame looking for a way out. They do get it to center. Stir back for Gucciardi. He's able to send it towards the center line. Janicki breaks it up and now he gets it deep and Notre Dame can change. Work by Bolton. Cuts it off, and now he races after the puck in the corner. Plays the big hit. It's getting physical here. As the Spartans are on the move the other way. Manisto drops it for Shouty out of his reach. Carpenter goes down, trying to kick it out, and then Kelly's shot deflects up out of play, and everyone can catch their breath. It was a quiet first half of this contest, and now it's picked up. Isaac Howard and the Spartans scored to begin the scoring, and then Ryan Seedham, 28 seconds later, tied the game. Midway through the second period, Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. Steve, we came into the weekend knowing Artem Levshnov was special, but that right there was something else. The timing was perfectly, was perfect. He broke up the play, gets it going the other way. You know, keep in mind, two years ago, he was still in Russia, Belarus. Last year played with the Green, Ga Green Bay Gamblers. And, you know, his English isn't perfect, but boy, his hockey is. Again, he's likely to go in the top five. Everywhere you look, that's where he's projected. Everyone still says Celebrini, who we saw with BU, is likely to go first. But he's 
one of the best, if not the best, available defensemen in the draft. And you can see why. Again, just turned 18 last October, so he's really young. His body, as you pointed out, he's, what, 6'2", over 200 pounds. Yeah. They rave about just the way he's built, so advanced for his age. That's what you're looking for with a guy that you get into the professional ranks. He's ready to go right away. Well, and he's, he's a workout nut, too. They say they have to drag him out of the weight room <laughs> even during the week. You know, they typically hit the weight room Monday, Tuesday, and he's always the last out of the weight room. Um, you know, his father died from COVID a few years ago at a relatively young age, so his mom, you know, was without a dad for a few years. His mom's back in Belarus with his sister, so he came over to North America kind of alone, and uh, he has really forged a path for himself and turning a lot of heads, not only in East Lansing, but through the whole hockey world. He had three points in the series against Notre Dame two months ago at the beginning of December. And again, he leads the entire country in plus minus. They're a plus 24 when he's on the ice. Just tells you how valuable he is. Of course, Spartans have had a great year. They're outscoring their opponents, so everyone's plus minus looks pretty good. But I always think, Steve, when you look at defensemen, you can get a real good idea of how the motor is running when certain defensemen are on the ice. Yeah, and he controls the play. I, I love watching him at his offensive blue line when the puck comes back to him. Reminds me a little bit of a guy I played with, Nick Lidstrom, <laughs> same number. I was going to say, it's just number five, got it. Number five, <laughs> and he walks the line, but, but he controls the play. And he doesn't make many mistakes back there. And you see right now, just kind of reading, talking with his with his D partner, Ian House. Well, that's a real good look there. Just talking about if they get the puck, what they want to do. Yeah, and again, the pairing between them. They were working really close together in warm-ups. Almost a six-year difference in age. Neenhouse, the 24-year-old captain, and the 18-year-old future star at the next level. They've worked some magic all year long. Neenhouse has it, drives it. Bischel makes the save. Webster finds it for Levshnov. Puck goes down low. Mueller looking to center a feed that Davidson recovers. Neenhouse back for Levshnov. Shoots and whew, Bischel able to make the glove save. Well, he'll stop that 99% of the time from range. Wasn't really a screen in front of him. Didn't, didn't get tipped either. I really like the way Notre Dame's played in their own zone. I mean, yeah, that was a shot on net. And now, all of a sudden, Michigan State is at eight. But it was from about 60 feet out. That's something that Ryan Bischel stopped all day long. I, I just really like the way they're taking away the middle of the ice. Shots are dead even right now on the official scorecard at 18 apiece. Notre Dame, though, is out blocking Michigan State 13 to 1. So wow. more attempts coming yeah. from the Spartans so far. They win an important draw there. That yeah. was Davis. Irish have even the ledger a little bit on the face off. Thought it was 12 6. It's now 19 15. Hmm. Again, if you're just joining us, Spartans scored first on the power play, and then Notre Dame 28 seconds later with Ryan Seedham kind of on a broken play, tied the score. They did not trail for long. Carter Slager takes away. Down for oh. Davis, who tipped it towards net. Rebounds loose for Fleming. Out it comes Master Domenico. Another stop by Augustine. Boy, he's good with his pads, isn't he? And you know, it's funny, Coach, head coach Adam Nightingale made a comparison to Ryan Miller. I'm, I'm seeing it right now. Really good feet, really good pad work, and just making it look easy. Yeah, he mentioned Ryan Miller, which is, of course, huge praise. Longtime goaltender in the NHL, of course, played at Michigan State, won the Hobie Baker back in 2001 as a goaltender. I was looking up his stats. His save percentage that year he won the Hobie Baker, Steve, 950. <laughs> Set the NCAA record for career shutouts with 18. Goals allowed was 1.32. So, yeah, he was pretty good. And watch Jaden Davis. Now, if he had kept his skates, he's going to fall down. If he had kept his feet, he might have been able to get to this rebound. I like the way he tips the puck. Watch. Davis getting up late and tips it there, but then actually it was Augustine who tripped him. <laughs> and that took him out of the play. There's the shot by Slager, the tip, and then the trip by Augustine. So, you know, that was an accidentally on purpose kind of play by the netminder, I think. Yeah. Smart play by him. <laughs> Irish have the puck in the Spartan zone. Seat again, looks for a shot, flex up out to the neutral zone, and the Irish retreat for it. 
Just getting back to Ryan Seedham in that goal. He brings so much more than just the offense. You talked about the block shots. I remember talking to Jeff Jackson. They break out of their own zone a lot better this year, and he said a lot of it's with plays like Ryan Seedham. The players like Ryan Seedham. Puck gets around him that time. Irish do well to recover, though, as the top Spartan line is out there right now. Top defensive pairing in Neenhouse. And Levshnoff are out there. Manny Nelson being a little extra hard on Levshnoff. This puck is tipped. I don't think they got it across the center line, but they wave off the icing and play continues. There's Levshnoff. Michigan State looks for a way out of their own end. Puck chips up high through the neutral zone. O'Connell had it taken away by Carpenter, but it's right onto the stick of Levshnoff. Jerry Larson down low. It comes around for Savage, who got a quick shot. It either caught a piece of Bischel or maybe even the post on its way out of play. Yeah, I think you're right, Tony. I think it was Bischel who makes himself big again. That's a nice play, though. Red Savage, they might be familiar to NHL fans. Brian Savage's dad, longtime NHLer. There's that pass from O'Connell. Kind of a no look wedge. Yeah. And couldn't really tell from that. I, I'm pretty I think sure it was Bischel, yeah. yeah. I think Bischel got it. But, I, I, you know, goalies are so good at that, just making themselves big when they're down in the butterfly. And that's what Bischel does. You mentioned Red. He played two years at Miami, played with his brother Ryan, and then he comes over here to Michigan State for his junior year. He was at Team USA a couple years back in 2022 as Gucciardi's oh. shot is deflected by Davidson and it hit the post. What a great deflection. That, that shot had some steam behind it. As and, Lane, he, and he got a stick on it. Puck was tipped, yeah, nearly had a chance to go home. We've seen a ton of action here in the second period as these two teams felt each other out in the first, and then they've really turned it on here in the second 20 minutes. Kind of a pedestrian first period, and it's turned into a track meet here. I mean, good hockey. And it, not exactly wide open, but just, you know, intense periods of action, and that's all you can hope for in a hockey game. Both goaltenders have made some big stops. Now, as you mentioned earlier, who's going to blink second, I guess? Oh. Mastro Domenico takes the spill. That's the worst of that. Mastro Domenico was trying to brace himself for the hit, and Larson put him down. They're still going at it behind the play. Mastro Domenico and Larson in the corner, really having to be taken apart. They don't want to stop. Joy Larson's good size. He's one of their bigger forwards at 6'1, 200 pounds. And Master Domenico thought he could surprise him. You know, they call it the reverse hit. Something that Peter Forsberg made famous when he played in the NHL, especially with Colorado. Both players are going to get penalties here. Well, listen. Notre Dame number four, Michigan State number 18, both two minutes for roughing. Roughing seems to be the call. We'll watch Master Domenico. He, you know, he checks his shoulder. So hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse hit you. Joey Larson knew it was coming. Put him down. And that wasn't the penalty. You know, and there shouldn't be a penalty there. Lar Larson is just protecting himself. And you can see the strength from Joey Larson because Master Domenico is not exactly a small guy. But this is what got them the penalties. The extracurricular afterwards. A couple of shoves to the face by both players and. We'll let them cool off for a couple minutes. I mean, Master Menico forced the official's hand. He wasn't going to let him go, and he were behind the play. They had to, at some point, stop the action and then get him off the ice. And now it opens up for four on four. Danny Nelson with the speed on his backhand. Can't get the shot off. Penalty upcoming. And Notre Dame's going to get a chance to go four on three. Yeah, Danny Nelson might not have been able to get that shot off as you called. Tony. Michigan State number five, two minutes for slashing. Might have been because of the slash. It, I, I thought I saw a hook, but he went to the backhand. He didn't get any leverage on it. That's Leshinov who gets beat to the outside. Good speed. And right there, oh yeah, I see. It was a slash and then actually a hook. And that's part of the reason that Danny Nelson lost the puck. But Lepshin off a big penalty killer in the penalty box, and we're going to see four-on-three hockey. What an opportunity for Notre Dame. 
highlighted it in the open. They scored three power play goals in their most recent series against Penn State, and now a chance to take their first lead of the night. A lot of time to work with four on three. Landon Slaggart on a one-timer right into the gut of Augustine. You know, right idea, but you don't want the shot in the midsection of a goaltender. He's probably going to absorb it. It's a soft shot so that it's going to stick to the goalie. You want to keep it on the ice, want it to go off maybe a pad to come out front. Big win there by Cole Knubel again. Here's Knubel. Walks his way in, shoots, goes wide, ricochets up high. Slackert's there. He gets it out to Seedham. He's got the only Irish goal. Seedham holds, sends it towards net. Good work that time by Patrick Geary to clear it towards the line, but Moynihan tracks it down. Here's Slackert, and Augustine again able to stand tall on his post to make the stop. Stand tall and absorb that puck. No rebound coming off Trey Augustine. Well, we should point out that Augustine has been drafted in the NHL. By the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah. Second round pick of Detroit. That's got to mean a lot to him. He's a Michigan native, South Lyon, Michigan. Red Savage as well. Fourth rounder in 21 for Detroit. A couple of guys playing close to where they hope to play in a couple of years. Irish win an important faceoff. Bavaro over for Nelson as they work it around the perimeter. Fisher for Nelson was looking to slide it through. Good work by Mueller to break it up. And he forces the puck back to center ice. That feed from Fisher didn't get through, and the Spartans can clear once again. That was Mueller again with a good stick. You know, two times he interrupted passes and they got pucks down the ice, and that's just great penalty killing from the Swiss native. Third power play opportunity for Notre Dame tonight. Worth mentioning that when Michigan State does not give up a power play goal in a game this year, they're unbeaten. Fisher holds the puck. Spartans are 12-0-1. As Bavaro fires the shot, and Augustine gets a piece of it. Final seconds coming off the four on three. Notre Dame's now five on four for the final 10 seconds. Fisher's got it. Down for Janicki with five seconds left. Back for Fisher, across for Nelson. One last chance, and it didn't get through. Neenhaus blocks the shot as time expires. And that's how the second period comes to a close. Real nice block there from Neenhaus. Michigan State gets the power play going. They have the one nothing lead, but a huge response from the Fighting Irish. Sets up a fantastic third period. Should be a really fun third period during this second intermission, we'll have a chance to look at what Notre Dame fights for and get a chance to chat with the goal scorer for the Irish, Ryan Seedham, and ask him about how they managed to tie the score in period number two. It was scoreless after one, and then Isaac Howard opened it up with this power play goal, but just 28 seconds later, Ryan Seedham evened it again, and it's tied at one after two. Second intermission here in South Bend. We're now joined by the Irish goal scorer, Ryan Seedham. Ryan, appreciate you taking the time. Just how important was it for you guys to get that goal so quickly after Michigan State opened up the scoring? Yeah, that was big for us. Uh, one thing we've been talking about a lot is how we respond when the other team scores. So that was definitely big for us to get that right after they scored. That was a huge response. What did you see on the play? Because up here it looked kind of, kind of like a broken play off a couple of sticks, but you finished it off. What, what did you see on the ice? Yeah, honestly, it was pretty lucky. I saw just a bouncing puck, and I was standing there right in the slot, so I just tried to whack it towards the net, and luckily it went in. Last one I got for you, Ryan, is just about the importance of this final 20 minutes. Huge opportunity, of course, to beat a top-10 team in the country. What's going to be the key for you guys here in the final period? I think just keep doing what we're doing. Don't try to do too much. We know this is a big period for us, but... We're doing, we're playing really well, doing all the right things, so just keep doing it. All right, Ryan, appreciate the time and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right, there's the Irish goal scorer, Ryan Seedham. He's responsible for this game being tied at one after two. Third period's coming up after this. Everybody having fun in the Compton Family Ice Arena, including the Notre Dame band as we get set 
for the third and final period of game one between Notre Dame and Michigan State. Welcome back inside the Compton Family Ice Arena. Tony Simeone, Steve Conroy. We saw a scoreless first period. Still good hockey. Second period, really a lot more energy in the building. You mentioned it's sometimes a game of mistakes. You're going to see the two goals here, Steve. It's a game of great luck, opportunity, yeah. and fortune sometimes. You're right. And, and it's the bounce of the puck. And sometimes that happens. And sometimes it's a bounce off a ref. And sometimes it's a bounce off your own stick. But yeah, entertaining period of hockey. And hopefully uh, this third period sets up the same way. Let's look at what happened in period two. If you weren't with us, you missed a goal on each side. And boy, off the faceoff, Michigan State on the power play made it count right away. Yeah, this is a power play. You're right. Dorward seems like he wins it cleanly, goes right back to Howard. He won times it. But watch on the replay off the skate of the linesman then off the stick of Cole Knubel right to Howard and then off the crossbar too so you know three things had to happen and that's exactly what happened and there's that goal that Ryan Seedham just talked about a bad bounce off a couple of Michigan State players right to see who just wax at it goes through the legs might have gone off the defender too but then through the legs of Trey Augustine and he ties it up that was a really strong response you know what else has been really strong in this game, Tony, has been the goaltending. Yeah. Unbelievable. Trey Augustine down the Spartan net. Down the other end, Ryan Bischel's made some big stops, too. Cole Knubel. Watch that defensive play there from Levchnoff. Just an unbelievable eye-hand coordination play. Picks it out of midair. Gets it going the other way. Seen a little bit of everything tonight. That, those replays really illustrated that. Even the plays that look maybe inconsequential normally. Levchnoff put it on full display. I look at this stat sheet here, Steve. The number that jumps out to me is Michigan State. Just 19 shots, averaging 36 and a half per game coming in. Third most shots in the country. Fifth mo or third most goals per game as well. And Notre Dame, I think, for the most part, has bottled them up. I think Jeff Jackson and company have to be happy with the way they've contained one of the best offenses in the country so far tonight. I give a lot of credit to the Fighting Irish defenders. And when they don't have the puck, they're working. They're working really hard. They're taking away good ice. You know, they're forcing Michigan State into some you know bad passes, bad places. And uh, to start this period. There we go. We're all even five on five. Well, five seconds left on a power play. They're back to even strength. The puck comes all the way down, and this is iced, so Notre Dame will get to take a face-off in the Spartan zone 18 seconds into the contest in the third period. Tony, I thought it was really good. We just saw Ryan seat him there. He's heading off the ice, but you know, you talked about responses after goals, and he said that's something that we've really stressed in the dressing room. As coaching staff, as players, you know how you respond when a goal gets scored, and what a, what a fantastic response by the Irish. They went off the faceoff, and Bavaro tries a one-timer. Missed the net wide, but Knubel's right there to reload it. Bavaro again, shooting for a tip this time, and it rolls to the corner. Knubel's got it again. It's been a different player since joining the top line to play with Moynihan and Slagger. Hawk was held in, they say. Bavaro shot, ricochets out to the neutral zone, and Michigan State will change. When you talk to Jeff Jackson about that oh, in that oh, line oh. with Knubel and, and Slager, he said, I had them together right at the beginning of the year, and you know, the chemistry wasn't there yet. But he said, when Danny Nelson went over to the World Juniors, I put those guys together, and it was instant chemistry. Knubel had a big hat trick, a four-goal weekend to start the New year as Larson's on his way in, leading scorer for the Spartans on the year with 15 goals. Shoots high and wide, and he has the puck again in the corner. Out it comes for Neenhaus. His shot tipped wide. O'Connell retrieves it and sends it right back for Neenhaus. Spartan captain circles the net, has a chance to wrap around. Bischel has to make the save. Nelson gloves it out of the air and settles the puck. It's a real good stop. And I hope we get an opportunity to look at it by Ryan Bischel. Neenhaus circles the wagon, comes out front, and I think that Bischel almost turned his blocker hand sideways to make that stop. Neenhaus, again, the captain, has seven goals on the year. He's voted the team's most outstanding rookie when he started his career. Only had five goals in his previous three seasons, has taken his offense up a level this year with this Michigan State renaissance in year two under Adam Nightingale. Mentioned his dad, Craig, played in the NHL for a number of years. And during All-Star Weekend in Toronto, he also performs in a rock band. And <laughs> they performed up in the Toronto area. That's right. Something else. Again, Neenhaus and 
Levshnov has just been such an amazing tandem this year. Neenhaus wrapping up. It's been a really impressive career with the Spartans. Put in a lot of good work. Now seeing it all pay off here in what's been a return towards the top of college hockey. A team that already has more wins this year than in nine of their previous 11. Mm. Well, it's funny because head coach Adam Nightingale said that East Lansing is a hockey town. And they are proud of their team right now. Tony, you talked about what Michigan State's done the last couple of years, especially this year. And it's not just the goal scoring, it's not just the goaltending. The 17 wins so far, more than nine of the last 11 years. 11 big 10 wins, that's the most in program history. And six players with 20 or more points. And he talked about it, Jeff Jackson talked about the depth on this team. It's not just a couple of lines, it's all four lines. It's all three pairs of defense, too. Think about the fact that they've set all those records this year. The Big Ten's about a decade old. There's still eight games left in the conference season for them. Just tells you how down they've been in recent years as Manisto is able to track it back in his own end. They got Matt their first Big Ten series win a year ago. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tony. Maddox Lemming had an opportunity for a, a breakaway there. He tried to kick the puck, and I think he kind of stubbed his toe in the ice, and that's why he went down. Bazgal shooting oh. for a deflection. Kelly did tip it towards Bischel. He had to make the stop and smother it with Tiernan Shouty bearing down on him. And Tanner Kelly was not in the lineup their last game for Michigan State against Minnesota. He did get his stick on that puck. A deft little redirection, the shot from the point. And four of his five goals this year, Steve, are game-winning goals. So yeah. this is his time <laughs> in the third period in the tie game. He's looking for the net. Now fourth line did their job. Now the first line comes out with a face-off in the offensive zone. This is that sophomore line. Howard does have the goal. It came on the power play. He's the new addition to join Russell and Dorwart, who played together as freshmen and, as you mentioned, in their USHL days prior to Michigan State. Trying to go to work right now. Bavaro does well for Notre Dame to break it up. Levschnoff has to play it in the neutral zone. Now Knubel takes a spill. Howard has it. Can't get a clean one off, and it ends up on the stick of Landon Slagger. Irish captain plays it for Michael Mastro Domenico. He had it taken away from him. And now Russell's able to retrieve it for Michigan State. Yeah, that was Levshinov with the breakup at the blue line. That could have been a three on two. And Levshinov, not only is he big at 6'2", he uses that long stick. And I think that's such an advantage for defensemen. I don't know if we can see that. It was just outside the blue line, but going to be a three on two. Master Domenico jumped up on the play, and Levshinov you know, didn't panic, just used that stick to, to poke the puck away from harm's way and break up the play. Watch it as it heads to the blue line. And right there. Just a little poke check. It wasn't a body check. It was just stick on puck, break the play up, get it going the other way. He seems to have a lot of the stuff, Steve, that it takes a while to acquire. We saw the, the little moves with the stick. He seems to be so advanced for just an 18-year-old playing defense at this level. Well, playing with a lot of confidence and obviously playing with Nash Neenhaus, I think, really helps him a lot, too. Uh -oh. Here comes O'Connell, had a chance to break free. Couldn't collect it cleanly through his skates. It's taken down to the ice by Pluszynski, and Notre Dame has the puck again. Good job by Pluszynski to be really hard on O'Connell, and you mentioned the goal scoring this year for him. You know, O'Connell's a strong guy, and Pluszynski just made him pay the price. Here come the Spartans. Sturback drove it wide. It was some great feed from Larson and Savage through center. Those two have really got a good chemistry on this third Spartan line. They've got great depth, Steve. Lines one, two, and three. They don't look like they lose a beat when either one of those three lines hit the ice. Well, you know what? I looked at it real quickly, Tony, and coming into this game, they've only scored a goal, but their third line, their listed third line of O'Connell, Savage, and Larson has 34 goals. That's the most of any threesome on the team. So, yeah, Adam Nightingale wasn't lying when he said we've got depth, and it's not just our top line. It is throughout the lineup. You mentioned O'Connell. He's on the left there. He's got 11 goals on the year on just 54 shots, so his shot percentage is above 20%. The only thing with him is he's only got three goals in his last 14. Got off to a great start with eight in his first 12. He's had a little bit of a skid here, though, in his freshman campaign. The second line out there, Lebster. 
going to work for the Spartans. In a tie game, it comes around for Basgal. Shoots intentionally wide, and nobody's home. Puck comes through center. Tyler Carpenter puts on the speed to track down this puck in the corner for Notre Dame. Real good speed there from Tyler Carpenter. Actually won that foot race, and now just trying to tie the puck up. Does well to get it to Strand. He finds Janicki, pulls it across for Bavaro. Time and space to shoot. And Augustine shrugs it off. Master Domenico spills in the corner. He now has the puck go, go, go. taken away. Mueller finds Lebster. He's got Davidson with him looking for him. And good work by Bavaro to intercept it in midair. Like Levshinov in that second period. That was a real calm, cool, collected play by Bavaro. Just bunted that out of midair. That player was in behind him. That's great defending. Bavaro preseason second team all Big Ten. He's got 14 points on the year. Offensive minded defenseman carries the puck into the offensive end right now. Sends it down low and now goes off for a change. This puck is wide of Bischel. Good work though by Manisto to beat the icing call. Now he sends it for Kelly, who couldn't connect. Gets it back, and he goes down as Slagger takes him out. Could have been a tripping penalty there, because Slagger didn't make contact with the puck. Maddox Fleming's shot. Couldn't get off cleanly. Lev Schnapp sends one ahead for a streaking Kelly. <laughs> Kelly again, that time looking for Howard. Has the lone Spartan goal. Onto the stick of Austin Orvitz. His shot goes wide. Sturback drops it off for Howard. He'll take his time in the offensive end. Pivots and takes it along the blue line. Crosses over. Orvitz takes the puck back. He shoots wide. Rebound. It was just to top the crease. Irish able to clear it towards the line and out to center ice. Every time a Spartan defenseman gets the puck in the offensive zone, there's two green jerseys in front of the net. They have made a concerted effort to take the eyes away of Ryan Bischel and trying to get sticks on pucks as they come to the net. There's Patrick Moynihan into the offensive end. Top line is out there for Notre Dame now. Knubel looking to send it back for Jake Boltman, and it takes him all the way back into his own end. Yeah, the puck skipped on him just at the last second. Kind of a hot pass for Boltman. Top line's out there for Michigan State as well. Slaggard's feed intercepted that time by Basgal. Was looking for Howard. Good work by the Irish captain to track back and break it up. Landon Slaggard realized that he turned the puck over. He wanted to make sure it didn't turn into an odd man rush the other way. Just got on his horse and helped break the play up. It was a scoreless first period. These teams were filling each other out. Second period, the ice opened up. A lot of chances. And now here in this third, Steve, it feels like the chess match has started to settle in. There all kind of seeking that potential go-ahead goal, but nobody wants to make the big mistake right now that could well, give the other team the upper hand. You're right, it's a chess match, and you don't want to make a mistake. You want to make safe plays. You know, you don't have to open up just yet. And obviously, you know, a huge game for both teams in the Big Ten, but I think bigger for Notre Dame. I think you're right, as Ali sweeps one out of the reach of Janicki. Michigan State's in a comfortable position right now. Notre Dame's 20th in the pair eyes on the outside looking in. This would be a massive win as they give the puck away. Oh. A shot for O'Connell is robbed by Bischel. A huge save to keep the game tied. Another broken play. Look off, look it went off the skate of one of the Irish players. Watch this as it works along the boards. Yeah, right there. And that goes off. That was Trevor Janicki in front of the net. And what a stop by Ryan Bischel. Janicki may be screening him a little bit too, but he read that puck coming off the stick of O'Connell. Right there, good positioning. That's a great angle there. Well, we've seen some fantastic goaltending at both ends of the rink. This puck settled down by Pluszynski as the Irish take their time in their own end. Out through center, Strand is there, can't get it in deep. Being worked on by Mueller. Sturback had his feet deflected back into his own end, reloads and finds Mueller. Into the offensive end he goes. Second line out there for Michigan State, Lebster takes it behind the goal. Gucciardi 
Sends it back in deep as Mueller retrieves it in the corner. Sturbeck feeds it through center. Carpenter did enough to tip it and break it up. Oh, a good chance in front that time. Mueller couldn't connect, but he was lurking on the doorstep. Yeah, he was looking for that. That was a quick pass, maybe a hot pass. 200-foot clear ends up right on the goaltender Trey Augustine. Carter Slagger battling with That's Kelly. Again, go, go. Kelly has five goals on the year. Four have won games for Michigan State this year. Tiernan Shouty had it for a moment. He scored the game-winning goal in game three of that Big Ten playoff series in this building last year to win it for Michigan State. Funding had the puck taken away, comes through center, Kelly's there, being worked on by Seedham, the lone goal scorer for Notre Dame. Now Manisto on his way in, Bischel makes the stop, nobody lurking for the rebound, and Seedham can settle it in his own corner. Well, Manisto, not the biggest guy out there in Michigan State, but you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. He does a real good job of exploiting time and space. Both top lines are out there again with less than nine minutes to go. In the third period. Mitchell comes out to play it around for Master Domenico. Sends it along, and this is likely an icing call. Yeah, it'll bring the puck back into the Irish zone. It'll bring the puck back, and you've got some tired guys on that first line. Landon Slager was trying to get off the ice. He has to come back out. So they'll, they'll have five or ten seconds to get a little bit of win here, but Michigan State. And all of a sudden, the faceoffs are almost even, but yeah. Michigan State here, a huge draw for them. 24 23 now, Notre Dame. It was 12 wow. 6, Michigan State. And an important win for the Irish. They haven't cleared it yet. But the top Michigan State line out there, the best defensive pairing as well with Neenhouse and Levschnoff. Irish can now manage a change with the puck in the neutral zone. Howard had it taken away by Danny Nelson. Nelson will shoot. Augustine makes the stop. Back for Bavaro. Shoots. Didn't miss by much. Janicki's rebound is stopped. Dorwart may have gotten in the way to block the rebound try. I think you're right, Tony. Bavaro again. Across it goes. Master Domenico feeds Bavaro on a one-timer. That's just a dominating shift from the second line. They get on the body, they create some turnovers. Bavaro gives it, gets it back. That's just a, a great heads up hockey play. Bavaro, tons of room. He gives it to Master Domenico. Master Domenico gives it right back in the wheelhouse. The perfect one timer. But a huge goal for the Irish with just under eight minutes to go. That, that was a dominating shift. I mean, they, they get it back, they get the puck deep, they get it back. And that turned the complexion of this hockey game. What a goal from Bavaro. Brings the crowd to their feet, and now a critical seven and a half minutes for the Irish. They're hunting for more. Knubel for Moynihan. Sends it back, looking for Fisher. It's intercepted by Larson, and here come the Spartans. O'Connell, his feed intercepted by Slagger. As the Irish top line can kill some time and make a change behind Knubel. First time they've led all night. Tipped towards net. Wow, Knubel's been all over the place tonight. Yeah, he's had a good game. Good defensive play there in the last shift, too, by Landon Slagger. Could have been a three on two. He gets back hard, breaks up the play. And the Irish in this third period have done a real good job protecting the blue line. And Notre Dame has gone offside. Less than seven minutes remaining in regulation. Michigan State led for 28 seconds before Ryan Seedham tied it in the second period. And now Drew Bavaro has given Notre Dame the lead.
Less than seven minutes to go between Notre Dame and Michigan State in game one. It's time to look at the college hockey scoreboard. A lot of scoreboard watching now that we're into February, Steve. Michigan takes care of business against Ohio State. Minnesota, that'd be a big win. If they could go to Wisconsin and get a win in the top five, that would just continue to strengthen the Big Ten overall. It certainly would. I mean, that, that Minnesota-Wisconsin rivalry is fierce. It can be vicious at times. And uh, game's not over yet, but Minnesota with the lead. And conference would love, you know, at least the non-top two teams would love to see Michigan State and Wisconsin both go down as Lepster's in on Bischel off a ricochet off the wall, and he has to make the save. Wow. That was just kind of an, almost like an icing, but Boltman had come across. They waved off the icing in the one-timer for Webster. Puck does not get through. Not cleared yet. It's near the line, and it is Janicki who's able to get it up to Brennan Ali. This Michigan State team in the midst of one of their best seasons, really, since they won a national title back in 2007. More wins this year already than nine of their last 11. A win tonight would give them the most wins in their time in the Big Ten. Already matched their high over the time in the Big Ten with 11. Puck's loose in the slot, kicked towards the line, and it is out. Irish, on the other hand, missed the NCAA tournament last year. That snapped the nation's longest streak of consecutive trips to the tournament. They're trying to get back there into four frozen fours under Jeff Jackson. Two title games, but have not won a national championship in his time here in South Bend. Well, the way it's setting up, he talked to us about it. Watch this. Uh oh back giveaway. Pucks loose, a shot from Howard, and Bischel once again bails the Irish out. A little sloppy coming out of their own zone. You gotta be sure. If you're not sure you put it off the boards, you put it off the glass. Russell ends up picking off a pass and get a pretty good look there. Howard has the one goal tonight. This is their best line. Dorwart, Howard, Russell. There's that soft play along the boards and Russell drops it to Howard. And you just can't have that. Howard's got it again. Irish, get it out to center. Howard gave it away. Canoodle intercepts. Dorwart's got it. Here comes the top Spartan line again. Howard for the trailer. It's Orvitz. Oh, the shot is blocked. Boltman gave up the body. He's still on the ice as the puck is out through center ice. Now Ali feeds it ahead. Knubel on his way in, and Cole Knubel scores the third goal. What a great play by Jake Bullman, who sacrifices his body. I think it goes off the inside of his leg. You saw him pointing earlier. Yeah, it went off the inside of that left thigh, but that gets the puck going the other way. Ali gets it to Moynihan. He gives it back to Ali, and Cole Knubel picks his spot, hits it. Tony, you mentioned it earlier, Cole Knubel having himself a game. He finishes it off with a big goal, 4.32 to go in the third period. He has come alive here in the second half of the season. His sixth goal, and the Irish now have a highly coveted two-goal lead in the final five minutes. You know, the Irish played this perfectly. You realize that Michigan State had to open up a little bit. So they got to take some chances. They had a defenseman jumping up on the play and a huge block by Jake Boltman gets it going the other way. I should mention Jake Boltman went down the alleyway to the uh, bench. Make that to the dressing room. Yeah. So Jake Boltman might be being attended to. Well, this is also a really interesting number, Steve. Look at third period scoring so far this year. Michigan State's been great in seconds and thirds. Look at that number for Notre Dame. They're plus 15, almost outscoring opponents now by a two to one ratio on the year. It's 31 to 16 in third periods for the Irish. Well, you talked to Jeff Jackson about that. He said, I like to think it's our conditioning. Yeah. And that's the first thing he talked about. And they are a very well-conditioned team. Now we mentioned the flu went through this team midweek. 
Uh, they seem to be firing all cylinders right now, though. Yeah, he was quick to point out strength and conditioning. Took the cap. He has really all year to Tony Rolinski, their strength and conditioning coach. Does great work with this oh. team. It's now a penalty's coming up. Yeah, this Pluszynski looks like it might be a hold. Jaden Davis getting into it right now. Zach Pluszynski's had a good game. He's played physical. Might have been guilty Notre of reaching. Notre Dame, number 26, two minutes for a holding and a 10-minute misconduct. Well, so we've got a 10-minute misconduct, too. So not only will he have to serve two minutes, he will not be able to play the rest of this game. 26, a big part of the back end defensively. And there, when you get one hand on your stick, and Benisto's had a great third period here. He's been very noticeable for Michigan State. He's fast, he's elusive, he's had some shots, and he draws a big penalty there. Let's see what Michigan State can do. They're at the bench right now talking to Jeff Jackson. Well, somebody's got to go in to serve the two-minute minor because Lozinski got the 10-minute major, yeah. and 10-minute misconduct also, so he cannot come out of the bench until the game is over. What an opportunity still here for Michigan State. Fifth best power play in the country. They score on 20%, 27% of their power plays this year. They've got a power play goal tonight. It's their only goal, and if they can get one, gives them a chance to take Augustine out of the net and go for the tie. O'Connell sends it across. Deflected shot that Bischel's able to save. The puck's loose. O'Connell takes a spill. Bischel's got it covered, and they blow the play dead. Boy, that puck was loose for a second. Master Domenico came back, and I think he helped out to make sure that nobody got a second shot. Ryan Bischel was a little anxious there because he saw the puck maybe about seven or eight feet away from him. He couldn't do much about it. But it finally gets covered up. Danny Nelson did a good job winning that draw, too, to start. Danny Nelson, I just quickly checked after two periods, 8 0 in the faceoff dot. And he's back out there again to take an important faceoff. Wow, he's 12 for 13 now. He's been dynamite. He's working on one right here. Pucks loose. Irish able to win and clear. Yeah, so that's another win. So that's 13 to 14 in this hockey game for Danny Nelson. And he and Knubel. Knubel's 12 for 20, so he's 12 and 8. The two freshmen have won the lion's share of the face-offs. Howard Speed is intercepted. Nelson's got it. He's on his way out with Trevor Janicki. Sends it across for Janicki. Trying to kill some time in the Spartan end. It's taken back by Russell. Up ahead for Dorwart. From 13 on lead. Spartan still with 50 seconds left on the power play. Augustine's going to go to the bench. They're going to try to set up oh. the six on four as Bischel makes a big stop in front. That was off of Russell. Great glove save. Six on four now for the Spartans. 35 seconds on the power play. This shot tips up high and out of play. That was a block by Seedham. He got his stick on it. That's as good as a shot block. What a stop by Ryan Bischel. They haven't had a lot of good looks on the power play in this third period. That was maybe one of the better ones, and Ryan Bischel there for the stop. You mentioned earlier, Steve, how important this game is. We looked around the scoreboard as well. Wisconsin and Minnesota of course, we're playing earlier. You saw Wisconsin on the ropes against Minnesota, and Michigan's already won. So it, it, it looked like coming into the weekend that Michigan State and Wisconsin should feel pretty confident about where they stand at one and two. But if Wisconsin were to lose, this includes the Michigan result today, it's going to clump up a little bit more. And you see there's still a quarter of the conference season left. I think a lot of these teams are thinking, hey, if Notre Dame could even sweep this weekend against Michigan State, there's still hope to make a run for the one seed. Absolutely. You know, three-point games when you play within the conference, you could end up with 30 points come late Saturday night, and that's what Notre Dame is hoping for. Uh, they've got to get through this 30. Now, that was a timeout by Michigan State. They talked over what they want, six on four. They still have 30 seconds left in that power play. Important face-off again. Nelson's been red hot. 
Notre Dame's won 25 to 12 on the faceoff circle since they trailed 12-6 to start the game. Michigan State does come out of the pack with the puck, though. It's Levchnov in a six on four. Shoots. Nelson blocks it. This puck's not cleared. It's held in. Neenhaus will cycle it down low. Less than 10 seconds on the power play. Feed went off the skate of Slaggard and didn't miss the net by much. Neenhaus for Levchnov. One timer coming. Rebound is swept towards the line and it comes out. Great clear by Slaggard. You mentioned the leg drag earlier to break up a play. You know, that was a quick shot, and the rebound was there. Slager just turned around and got it across the blue line. Now watch Landon Slager right there. Just turn and get it out. That relieves some pressure. And then Michigan State tried to bring it back in offside, so that's why the faceoff just outside the blue line. So the power play is over. Net is still empty, though. Six on five for Michigan State. They win an important faceoff. Russell lost the puck. Janicki's got it for Knubel. Intercepted by Dorwart. Michigan State at least prolongs the intrigue for another few seconds. Scored in the final five seconds to win against Minnesota last week. They need now two goals in the final minute, 15. janicki has got it. Looks for Knubel on his backhand. Sends it across for Trevor Janicki. And there's the knockout blow. Well, selfless play by Cole Knubel, who's had himself a hockey game. Really like the maturity of this Notre Dame win, and it will be a win. They lead 4-1 with a minute to go, but great defense, you know, patient, waiting for Michigan State to open up. Keep in mind, this game was tied 1-1 after 40 minutes. But Notre Dame waited for their chances, played solid defense, got some great goaltending, and took advantage. When they had the opportunity, Drew Bavaro gives them the 2-1 lead, and it's been two more goals since then. Michigan State has scored two or more goals in all but three games this year, Steve. Unless they get another one here, it's going to be just the fourth time all season they've been held to a single goal. They've not been shut out all season long. Talked about it also as a penalty is going to come up here. We mentioned it, and we didn't mention it tonight. Coming into the weekend, they were coming off that series last week when they only scored four goals against Minnesota. Notre Dame number four, two minutes for cross-checking. Four goals is the fewest they've scored in a weekend all year. The second fewest was seven in the first series against Notre Dame. Wow. They've only got one tonight, so the Irish seem to have at least figured something out against one of the nation's best scoring units through three games. Well, you know, this team has been improving each and every week. And, you know, you talked about the number of freshmen at Michigan State. You know, Notre Dame's got seven or eight freshmen who play every night, and they have been getting better each and every night. Michael Nasser Domenico takes a cross check in the final minute. Coaching staff won't like that. Michigan State needs something extraordinary now in the final 40 seconds. The freshman right there, Danny Nelson getting hacked at. He and Levchnov come together in the final half minute. Want to avoid anything unnecessary here. I'm sure everybody's eligible for an important game two tomorrow on both sides. This is going to be a massive win for Notre Dame. Michigan State with plenty of cushion as far as it relates to both the Big Ten standings in the NCAA tournament. You felt like with eight games to go, all against top 12 teams in the pairwise, Steve, at least one win was necessary. We're going to give it to Notre Dame for the purposes of this. Yeah. They're going to be within 10 of Michigan State. If they can get the sweep, it not only brings them into the conversation, it really brings the whole conference into the conversation during the final four weeks. Well, yeah, Michigan State, all of a sudden, if they can lose two in a row, uh, this certainly a quality win. And you got to hand it to Notre Dame. It's worth stating again. They played a patient hockey game, a smart hockey game. 
played great defensively. Yeah, they got some fantastic goaltending, but for the most part, they kept a high octane offense to the outside. They give them full credit for this win. Third period is how the Irish do it again. They win 4 1 in game one, and they'll go for the sweep tomorrow night against Michigan State. That'll do it for us, for my broadcast partner, Steve Conroy, producer Derek Coleman, director Doug Thompson, and the rest of the outstanding crew in South Bend. Tony Simeone saying so long, and we'll see you tomorrow night for game two between the Irish and the Spartans.